let's say you only have 0.01 Bitcoin and you think this is not a lot. We are talking about 0.01 Bitcoin. It's 1 million Satoshis. It's a lot, guys. Don't gamble it away. Hold on to it and hold it for a few years. I'm pretty sure you will not regret it. Is your crypto working for you? It can be with yield farming. But what are the risks? Hacking, volatility, poor smart contracts, scams. Even if you overcome the risks, there are still limitations. Do you have a million dollars to invest? Yield farming is a very complex, time-consuming, and expensive process. Can you imagine that not only you need to possess advanced skills to mitigate your risk and check smart contracts, but also you need to quit your job? In order to get the highest return, you need to manage thousands of platforms and check protocols around the clock. Well, not anymore. We're proud to announce the SwissBorg Smart Yield account. It's now possible for anyone to earn yield on most of your cryptos, such as USDC, Bitcoin, Ether, BNB, and only starting with 10 euros, the tap of your finger. So how does it work? It's simple. On a daily basis, Oracle scans and monitors all the different investment opportunities and delivers for you the best investment returns. So how is that more secure? Not only do we assess the best risk reward ratio, but also your assets are protected by our MPC technology and our safety net program. And how it does deliver return? Well, because our system is scanning the market every single day, you get the optimal return on that day. How do you get started? It's easy in three different steps. The first one, you deposit. The second one, you start the yield program. And the third one, you start relaxing, enjoying your passive income. So guys, you know what to do. Subscribe to the Smart Yields, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. Dear crypto community and blockchain buys across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites. Special edition Dubai, the crypto millionaires and tons of cool stuff. Not just talking about Bitcoin, but talking about success, personal stories, habits, and all that really cool stuff so that we can learn lifelong lessons. And this time, once again, not the first, but second time, we have Chris from MM Crypto. Good to see you, bro, again. Thank you for having me again. Amazing, me. my friend. You know, one thing that I regretted in the last interview is like we jumped straight into the geeky stuff and I never had the chance to learn about you, my friend. And uh, a lot of people, I'm sure they're wondering out, uh, out there, like, who is Chris from MM Crypto? And, who were you growing up and you know and then after that i'd love to ask about your your story yep yeah i mean recently i do a lot of live videos and i see most of the questions people asking me are personal questions they want to know my background story and um, how i got where i am and everything so i think it's reasonable to talk about that happy to be here the last time maybe many of your followers remember we talked in davos at the world davos, economic forum which yeah. is cancelled i think it was pretty much exactly one year ago yeah in switzerland That's so nice true. to talk to you yeah, yeah. pretty much exactly like, Nearly up to the exact day. Crazy world, yeah. Crazy world, yeah. <laughs> it is maybe the exact day. Wow. Wow. Anyway, let's yeah. get to that later. So, yeah, let me know what you want to know and I'm happy to answer everything. Yeah, so I, I'm curious about, you know, like, so we talked to Carl, we talked to some of the guys and, you know, obviously you've reached a really, you know, you're one of the biggest crypto YouTubers on the planet. You have a great level of success. And, I, and for me, this show is not just about crypto, but really about learning about yourself. What are the habits? What are the success stories? And, and what are things that are, you have in terms of mindset that is helping you become the MM Crypto of today? Yeah, I think it all comes down to the mindset, just like you said. I said, and um, recently I developed a quote myself, and this was, the world is a PlayStation and your mind is the controller. And I truly believe that because how I see the world is that you actually can, can have an impact on the fabric of the universe with your own mind. So the thoughts, everything you think, everything you feel, the, the, the energy you soak up and you give, this all impacts the, the things which are happening to you in the real world. It's called law of attraction or law of vibration. Law of vibration is like a primary law. Law of attraction is a secondary law. And um, yeah, I learned about that a few years ago. And um, I realized that I can have whatever I want and I deserve whatever I want. So 
I, I tried to bring my, or I, I bought my, my mind in alignment to my goals and my purpose and I see how everything just manifests into, into my, in the real life. And yeah, I always wanted to be the most viewed crypto channel in the world. Um, now I'm, I'm fighting with Alcoin Daily and uh, like Carl from the Moon and like here and there. But I think for like a few weeks I was even number one and now it's like getting very close again. It's not a very nice competition. So it's very nice how to, to see how I achieved that goal already. and. Yeah, I, I just know that everyone can achieve everything and there's abundance for everyone in the world. Not everyone can be rich or so, but there's abundance for everyone, love and happiness for everyone. And yeah, once you understand that, your life turns out to uh, be better. That's amazing. Do you have any anecdotes of those things that started manifesting in real life or a freaky story or kind of this crazy coincidence that really marked you uh, across this journey? Well, I, I, I could say nearly everything what's happening to me in my life was based upon the law of attraction because it's the same for everyone. For example, if you have a negative mindset, bad things are happening to you. It is because of your mindset in the end of the day. Of course, everyone can be a little bit unlucky or some, some unfortunate things are happening in your life, but then it comes down to how you are actually uh, coping with them and um, if you are letting yourself to drag down. So no matter what happened, whether I, I met Carl or I met many other important people or people who are important in my life, um, my travels, good ideas I had for content which went, went viral, which made my channel more successful. Whatever it was, it was always coming down to my mind, I think. So um, usually what I say is, and of course I learned it from many others, is that your thoughts control the vibrations you are in and the vibrations and the energy you are in controls also what you attract into the real world. So if you are just constantly try to add value, help people be positive, you attract good things to your life. And to come back to your question, no matter what happened to me, whether it was friends I met, business partners I met, um, decisions I made, it's all based upon the mindset I developed over the last few years. That makes a lot of sense. And that mindset is so cool because you guys compete with each other, but you're also buddies, right? You tease yeah, each other and I beat you with more views. Yeah. It's fun, right? It's like a bromance at the same time you compete. It's really, we really are cool. Always, I'm always happy when he's getting a lot of views. He's happy when I'm getting a lot of views, like Carl or Crypto Jack, Ivan on Tech. We are not. We are. We are collaborating. We are even doing videos, sending each other followers. So we all laugh and support each other. And I think it's all what it comes down to. If Bitcoin is decentralized, but in the end of the day, the community should be centralized. They should work together. And um, I mean, we are here all for the same purpose, right? Bringing Bitcoin into the mainstream. That's the right mindset. The perfect mindset, right? It's like a cooperation, right? You compete, but at the same time, you cooperate. Exactly. It's a, it's really the perfect thing. And I must ask you, like you know, with success, there are always difficult times. Was there like a challenge that you had in life where you know it was hard to to break or a habit that you had to change along the way? Like, uh, what was some of some of the complications or difficulties that you you went through in order to reach this level? I, I wouldn't say that this applies to everyone in the world, but um, I was always. Starting when I wanted to get successful, I was starting to plan my day. I wanted to stick to a specific plan and um, work a certain amount of hours per day. But after time, I found out, especially researching more law of attraction, and this don't take it as advice for everyone. For me personally, I was just starting to live in the flow. It was just, I make a video whenever I feel like doing it. I, I, I go there whenever I feel like going there and I make decisions based upon my intuition. I just live in the flow. Right? The, the life flows through me and I just do this because I feel like that. And this turns out when I'm living through intuition and not so much to my rational mind, just like doing pros and cons, it turned out for me to be that, that I'm like most of the time doing the right decisions. And this is something um, Jeff Bezos actually said, that it always comes down to making a very high frequency of good decisions, of course, um, based on the assumption that you are an intelligent person, right? And then you are doing more right decisions than wrong ones because whenever you're doing a wrong decision, well, usually you can take it back or you can uh, make up for it. Whenever you are making a good decision, it's bringing a good outcome. But whenever you are making no decision at all, there's nothing happening. So um, I just try to make a lot of decisions, but in the flow. So I'm not planning too far out. That's right. beautiful. And the way you're talking about pros and cons, it reminds me of one of my favorite tools, which is a SWOT analysis, the strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and, and threats, you know, to yeah. not only think about a decision now, but how will it be like in six months or one year from now, like thinking long term. Yeah. So you mentioned Bitcoin right now. Now, this is the perfect transition. So uh, you talked about Bitcoin last time, which, by the way, for those who haven't seen the interview, it's a really good interview. And Chris 
tons of very useful information. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was so much fun. And I'd love to ask you now, like, how are you since Davos? So one year passed. You actually you made some really good predictions about DeFi. You also predicted that the having wouldn't have an impact instantly. It would take more time. Mm -hmm. But how are you now? 2021 Bitcoin. How is your feelings? And has anything changed since then? Well. I was keeping all my Bitcoin since then. Yeah. Where was Bitcoin back then? Where is it right now? So, of course, that was a nice decision. I started traveling more. And um, yeah, many of these predictions we made in the community um, helped me and my community, of course, to put in a lot of good trades. Uh, but in the end of the day, I think for everyone watching, trading is nice. I'm doing it. Our community is doing it. The best thing is just to buy Bitcoin and hold it. I hear so many stories of people who um, invested their Bitcoin into a company or did this or did that or started trading with too much stack of their um, total portfolio. And in the end, they end up holding not so much. And um, I think the best decision of mine was personally just to hold my Bitcoin no matter what. People are saying it's going to go to $2,000. Well, I just held it. People were telling me sell at $20,000. I held it. I had it at 30. I had it at 40. If we are tomorrow at 15, I don't care about that because I know eventually Bitcoin is the scarcest as in the history of mankind. It's uh, more scarce than gold. It's even more scarce than human time. If you move through space, you bend time, right? You cannot bend Bitcoin. And um, that's why I just hold Bitcoin no matter what. And I think that's what everyone should do based upon your own research. There's one meme where Morpheus talks to um, this other guy from Matrix, right? And this guy is asking him, hey, are you telling me I can sell my Bitcoin one day for millions? And then he's saying, hey, my young brother, when this time comes, you won't have to sell. And I think this is what it comes down to, right? Like you don't want to sell your Bitcoin for millions, even if one Bitcoin is at five million. When the time comes, the purchasing power is what it comes down to. And in five, 10 years, I think the purchasing power will be insane. It's the only asset which you cannot inflate over a specific amount. Even gold you can inflate, even time you can inflate, everything, literally everything. Bitcoin is the first asset which you cannot inflate. And now you see billionaires, millionaires all coming in and um, there's just not enough Bitcoin for everyone. When there's a fixed supply and the demand which increases, well, the only thing which has to happen to regulate this mechanism is the price to go up, right? And whoever understands the basic economic principles knows I shouldn't sell my Bitcoin no matter what. That makes so much sense. And I remember back then you were also talking about like DeFi and other positions like these days. So obviously Bitcoin, like you said, I hodl because you're such a strong believer. You're long term. You like you said, yeah. the Morpheus, the Matrix thing. How is your overview of the rest of the crypto market like Ethereum and, and other projects that you're interested in these days? Is there anything else that kind of excites you other than Bitcoin in the crypto yeah. space? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Ethereum, I'm holding a lot of Ethereum. For me personally, a lot. For many people, 40% would be a lot. For me, 8 9% is already a lot. Uh, then I'm holding some Polkadot. I'm holding... Um, yeah, I don't want to mention all the projects because sometimes when I mention a project, I learned that I don't want to have an impact on the price. So yeah. Polkadot I'm holding, Ethereum I'm holding, uh, Monero I'm holding, and uh, some other projects which I, I might not be might, might not want to mention. My approach for the DeFi... Um, bubble, the upcoming DeFi bubble is, I want to hold not the small DeFi projects, which I invested in a few, right? And they did well, but uh, in the end of the day, I think it's the best to invest into these Krakens like um, Uniswap, Polkadot, where, th where they are actually governing, like they are in the DeFi space and they are like, Ethereum was profiting from the ICO hype, Polkadot will be profiting from the DeFi hype, also Ethereum or Uniswap. So I want to buy these things with lower risk and still an insane upside because many of these IEOs, ICOs you are going to have opportunities investing in, well, if 95% of them are failing and you are doing 20 investments and you are a little bit unfortunate, you're not getting this one, you lose it all, right? So I think the best thing is to invest into these Krakens and uh, not too much, not too much. Like I, I have like half a percent in Polkadot, 1% maybe, 1% in Uniswap. So it's, so it's smaller investments. So super bullish Bitcoin, like really, really super yeah. bullish Bitcoin. And, and so like, do you see like, you know, obviously like Ethereum is the, the beast right now at the moment, right? It, it holds, you know, 90% of DeFi projects. The Binance Smart Chain is actually starting to accumulate more DeFi projects as well. Polkadot, you mentioned, do you, do you see like, you know, this crazy scenario with one of these big big blockchains may actually compete against Ethereum or threaten Ethereum? Well, more likely than for Bitcoin, for example, many people are asking me, 
do you think there's going to be a second Bitcoin yeah. who is fa which is faster, which is this or that? In the end of the day, it comes down to network effects, right? Okay. So Bitcoin has the best network effects. It's the most well known. Everyone joining the crypto space, every merchant is the most incentivized to onboard Bitcoin uh, as a payment system and so on. You have PayPal, you have Paul Tudor Jones, you have MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor. And what are they buying? They are buying Bitcoin. They're not buying anything else. So. Um, that's why I think for Bitcoin, for example, you have the network effects, a competitive edge, which I don't think any other coin will ever be able to surpass. And for Ethereum, more likely, but I think Ethereum has also a lot of network effects. You have like 20,000 developers, so much brain juice flowing in. You have the most projects on it. You have the most traffic on it. Of course, you have on Tron, you have a lot of traffic, but it's all due to gambling. So in the end of the day, I would bet my farm on Ethereum if I were to put it somewhere for DeFi and then maybe Paul Cardot. Yeah. So to answer your question, I think for Ethereum it's more likely. I still think Ethereum will remain to be king. Yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. And and you just mentioned MicroStrategy. You actually interviewed, right? Michael yeah. Saylor the other day. Now Amazing. The, the most uh, viewed <laughs> Michael Saylor interview on the internet. Oh, congratulations, <laughs> yes. man. That guy's a legend. Yeah. Wait, were there any, is it, first of all, like, so my first question is, what was the biggest takeaway you've had from Michael? Obviously, he says some very interesting things, great insights. And number two, you just mentioned him influencing other S&P 500 companies to put their corporate treasure into Bitcoin. Is that the most bullish scenario for Bitcoin in 2021? Uh, those two questions, yeah, would be amazing. Wow, let me start with the last one because just yesterday I met an em emergency video and literally it was one. It was the most bullish news I heard since ages. More bullish than PayPal. Because what Michael Saylor said, not only that he put in like a billion dollars, so 1.5 billion in Bitcoin, which was already insane. Like he was one of the first movers now to put a lot of the treasury into Bitcoin. The most bullish news for me was when he was announcing yesterday or the day before, um, talking here about uh, the end of January, that he is inviting executives, like a thousand executives from companies like Nasdaq companies, S&P 500 companies. And if you think about that, that let's say half of them are putting just a percentage of their treasury into Bitcoin, into a scarce asset, which cannot just be printed when the demand increases. Well, and then think about the Nikkei companies, about the German index, the DAX. Think about all of these big corporations. When they see other ones doing well, they don't want to be standing on the sidelines, right? So think about the game theory behind it and what this will do to the Bitcoin price. So when I heard this man, I was getting goosebumps like crazy. And 30 seconds later, I was pulling out my phone and starting with the video because this was the craziest news ever, man. Because what these companies need, it's like conservative investors, it's conservative companies, and they want to put their treasury into bonds, into government treasuries, right? What they need to even start considering touching Bitcoin is someone who shares their playbook, is someone like Michael Saylor, who was already successful with it, who can tell them where to buy it, why to buy it, why to store it, why it is valuable, and I think this guy, he's going to do much, much more for the Bitcoin price than we think right now. And I was so pumped about that, man. You are, I can feel the energy, yeah, yeah. man, zooming <laughs> your body like that. So is it really Michael Saylor? Do you think he's one of those pivotal moments in Bitcoin for 2021? I, I think it is. Like I said, network effects. It started with way back with like Gemini, with Wrinklewars Brothers and so on. And it's just cascading into a, into, into a chain reaction of events. Then you had, you had um, the Cash App with like the Twitter CEO, right? You you had a grayscale, you had a CME, you had MicroStrategy, you had PayPal. Like, and then the more people joining, the higher the frequency becomes of new millionaires, billionaires and billion dollar institutions actually joining the space. So I think Michael Saylor is just one more, one more point in this chain reaction of events. And we will see this continue for the next few years. It's, it's just gonna be insane, man. That's insane indeed. Uh, and I have to ask you, Chris, remember last time we were talking about Bitcoin, you had a strong conviction that Bitcoin would reach $300,000. Are you even more, like, is your conviction even stronger now? And, and what yeah. is the price target? It, it seems so crazy these days. People are picturing, like you said, $1 million and some yeah. crazy. Yeah, I, I, I stick to that. Uh, I mean, my, my, my exact number would be 275,000, but it's just based upon a few calculations that could be much higher, much lower. So if just someone points a gun to my head, this is the number I'm saying. Um, so I'm still sticking to the 300K. Um, I wouldn't go too crazy. If we hit the gold market cap, that would be 500K, but I just feel it's a, it's a lot to ask for, for the end of um, 2021. But I think we will easily surpass six digits easily. Like we will double down on that 
that's that's my bet. But don't bet the farm. I could be wrong. Like there are so many so many exogenous risks actually coming in, considering all the money printing. The increasing demand and the fixed supply, I think this is very, very easy targets to reach, even million dollars per Bitcoin. Uh, something else I wanted to say is just for everyone who wants to understand the scarcity aspect and why it's so important. Let's say the demand for Rolexes or Audemars Piquets is increasing. They could potentially produce more. Let's say the demand for gold increases well and the price increases, of course, they put more money into mining equipment. What happens when they put more money into mining equipment? More gold is being actually mined. When you put more money into Bitcoin equipment, the security of the Bitcoin network yeah, increases, but so not true. more Bitcoin are being mined. Yeah. This is the scarcity asset of, uh, aspect of Bitcoin. And once you understand that, and let's say you only have 0.01 Bitcoin, and you think this is not a lot. We are talking about 0.01 Bitcoin. It's 1 million Satoshis. It's a lot, guys. Don't gamble it away. Hold on to it and hold it for a few years. I'm pretty sure you will not regret it. With all these news, it's like like you said, you know, it really makes us want to huddle and not trade because what if you trade and the institutions are buying back your trade and you you lose all this Bitcoin? So it makes a lot of sense. I feel I feel like you these days as well, Chris. Is I don't want to trade. I just want to huddle and, and you know just hold on to it. I'm because trading a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I have a very very uh, strict um, set of rules. So I have a, sp a specific percentage, and everyone, if you really want to trade it. You should have that 2% of your portfolio, 5%, whatever. Yeah. But if it's gone, it's gone. You're not gone. going to take more from your holding portfolio, putting it into your trading portfolio. That's very important. And that's yeah. a really good tip to, to actually have a, just a ratio for trading and the rest hodling. Are there any other good tips that you learned along the way as you know, trading, investing, that, that you felt like, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to just trade with this little percentage. Anything else that you felt like, oh, this was a great habit that I had as a trader and investor? Well, in the end of the day, I would say buy and hold is the best advice. Um, if you want to trade, try to exclude your psychology. Fear and greed should be excluded. And uh, yeah, just for overall life advice, I think um, it always comes down to mindset, as I said initially. Um, research the law of attraction, the law of vibration. Um, try to be good, do good to the people, add value to the world. Um, give positive energy out and you will receive much more back than you, uh, than you initially gave out. That's what helped me a lot and I think this was what can help everyone be abundant, happy, and um, live in prosperity. Well, listen, you made me happy. You gave more than I asked for, so I really appreciate every single second. You guys, for those who do not know him, you've probably been sleeping on your mom's bed because MM Crypto is one of the hot shots in the crypto space. We'll put a, a link below so you can follow Chris and follow his videos. He produces content on a daily basis, right, these days? Yeah, daily. sometimes two videos per day. Two videos per day, so like a machine. Don't forget to follow Chris. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. If you like these ideas of the mindset, of the right habits of success, and then of crypto, Bitcoin, corporate treasury, and all these cool things, don't forget to like this video, blast the bell notification, and get back to us every Wednesday premiere at a PC near you, 8 o'clock GMT. Thank you so much, guys. Mm -hmm.